Hello Africa, you're welcome to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. This is the show that tackles issues pertaining to women as they contribute to national development. How have you been? I feel good and I bet you also feel the same. Well, whatever the situation, remember we always say don't worry, be happy because sadness or thinking too much is not going to change the situation. You just need to have a positive attitude and positive mindset and things will rather fall in place, okay? I am admiring my red outfit. That's because this weekend, YFM's paint and sip will take off. Those of you who have been listening to YFM, to ETV Ghana, to Happy FM and all other planet and other stations across the GMA group, you must have noticed that we've been talking about this Valentine event that YFM is organizing and we really look forward to having you there. However, to get there, you need to be able to book a reservation for free anyway, but we need to be sure you're coming. So to book a reservation, please send a WhatsApp to 24 Two seven five five three two three zero two four two seven five five three two three. If you are available on the eleventh, that's Saturday, you need to go to the Accra Mall at five p.m. If you are available on the fourteenth, which is Tuesday, you will need to go to the West Hills Mall at the same time. Now, talking about sad attractions, there's going to be karaoke, there's going to be painting and sipping, there's going to be networking, there's going to be flow art, there's going to be lots and lots of artist performances and adult conversations will also take place. So you need to back up and then get your loved ones to all send in their reservation request so that they get through to be able to paint and sip and enjoy Valentine's time with their closest friends and loved ones. When it comes to how I look, I always want to say thank you to Twinny Craft. Twinny Craft accessorizes me and makes me really stand out in the African look I always love. So for those of you who are interested in finding out how she puts together all the pieces she adorns me with, there's a training session going on and you need to give them a call, pick their number right now from the base of your screen and then book the time and the day you're going to be available to be trained and that's all you need okay so it's gonna run for some weeks and for some months depending on the duration you are going to be requesting for so give them a call right away and get on board when it comes to my hair I say thanks to I was hair it's so bouncy and lovely I love it so much thank you my makeup was put together by Becky Becky thank you for making me look good and I cannot stop saying thank you to Chanashi Chanashito is Ghana's number one pepper sauce and they have ensured that a lot of homes have made people smile. If you cook any Ghanaian dish and you don't add shito to it, there's a problem. And the shito you need to add to it is chanashito. Chanashito will sort out the taste issues and make your food taste deliciously awesome. Okay, so back to the conversation for tonight. On our social media platforms, we raised a conversation around women in STEM because this weekend on the 11th, the world is going to be commemorating a special day in the lives of women. And we are concentrating on women and girls who are into science. And uh, tonight, we're going to be having a lady who is an IT consultant and also an entrepreneur. Um, she's going to let us understand what we need to know about women in STEM, uh, the challenges they face, whether women are better at science or men are, would like to know that, and what it is a lot of African women are doing to influence, you know, science around us, and also provide some solutions to us. If we have certain challenges, what does it think we need to do to be able to, you know, prefer solutions and live a better life in our society? So we'll get the synopsis of the event, of the conversation right now is coming up shortly once I'm done with that I would introduce my guest this day the International Day of Women and Girls in Science is an annual observance adopted by the United Nations General Assembly to promote the full and equal access and participation of females in science technology engineering and mathematics fields
According to AAU.org research data, only 28% of the global workforce in STEM are women. Hence, tonight, African Women's Voices show with a drive to further the cause of women will highlight selected women who are making impact in this field across Africa. We will get to hear from our guests the benefits of being in STEM and encourage more to take advantage of the opportunities that abound. And you are welcome back to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. If you just joined us, we are about to introduce our guest today. And she is none other than an IT consultant and also the CEO of Soko Bags. She's in the person of Ya Prisla Virago. How are you? Good, thank you, Eunice. Thank you for having Good me. Good to see you again on the show. Well, sometime last year she was on to talk about her entrepreneurial skills. Today we are talking sciences and how we're going to link it to Soko Bags because I'm very sure there's a link to the sciences with whatever it is that she's put out that people should purchase. You're welcome once again. Thank you for having me. Okay, so based on the synopsis that we read to our audience, the United Nations felt that it was necessary to really, you know, um, appreciate the efforts of women and girls who are into science, and you are one of them. So, hey, I celebrate you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Thank so you. do you like science? If you do like science, I want you to put it right now down in our comment section on our Facebook page at ETV Ghana, okay? If you like science, let me know why you like science. If you don't, let's also know why, because who knows? You could be encouraged today from what it is she's going to be sharing with us tonight. So why do we need more girls in this field of science, mathematics, engineering? You know, it's a field that, sus. We don't really like. We have a few women there, but why do you think we need women to get into that space? Um, I thank you for that question. Actually, um, I think it's important for us to actually um, utilize women's abilities to um, put out the, the your best foot forward. Women are very intelligent. Women, um, when we decide to take anything on, we make sure that we do it to the you know to, to, to perfection. I would say, and most times we always do things because we want to solve issues mm. we don't do it because we're looking for you know mere income or something that would just make us feel good we do it to solve issues and any um technology out there any invention that's out there that women have actually been able to put out is because they are trying to solve a problem an issue and that is why the solution was basically um generated so i do think that women um we need to encourage more women in stem um, we need to ensure that women are um, voices are being heard provide more resources of course for women to be able to equip themselves well to be able to you know um allow themselves to grow in that field of STEM. So um, I do think that's important for women to For be, more women yeah, to get into yeah. that space. Yeah. So if you agree with her, we'd like you to drop that in our comment section as well. So the fact that women like to start and finish, they are not like the kind of people who will start and then halfway they're beginning to jitter and say, okay, I'm not so sure whether I want to finish this. When we start, we like to finish. And that's one thing science really appreciates. So women are supposed to be inclined towards sciences. You may have your reasons why you do not want to get close to sciences, but today Yabirago has gone through science. She's practicing IT consultancy, and that is to say that it really would work if you want to get into that space. Okay, now I'm going to be asking her a controversial question. Do you think that we have better women scientists than men or maybe in a better way that maybe girls will do better than men? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, um, I'm not going to be biased about that. I mean, men, of course, do things um, in a way that women don't, mm. right? When we, do, I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like when women, when we take anything on, we take it with seriousness. And when there's a problem that we're trying to solve, we always trust, I mean, strive to actually find a solution for it. So when it comes down to women being better than men, I would not say they're better, but I think that we do, um, we do shine in certain spaces, right? We do better in certain spaces. So if we're able to, if they give us that opportunity to shine in those spaces, we would definitely improve ourselves. For example, even, I mean, when we talk about leadership, 
um, and you look at you know some of these countries that women are actually leaders or presidents and companies that women are leading, you find that these companies and country countries are doing much better than you know countries that are kind of being led by men. Of course, women um, we 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 take a lot of things personal. We um, we make sure that we empathize with certain things that's going around us. So when we are solving an issue, we're not thinking about only us, but you know the community that actually surrounds us, and that all goes into that work. So um, you know I wouldn't say women are better than men, but I would say that of course if we're given that opportunity to shine, we would definitely you know shine on. Okay, I'll be going for a quick commercial break, but when we return, we get to talk about the challenges because she said something really important. If we are allowed to shine, we will shine bright. Okay, and then some person at home could say, well, but the opportunity is there. They are just supposed to step in and say, okay, I want to do mathematics, but they're not stepping in. And according to statistics, 28% of women globally are in STEM. And over 50% of men are in STEM. So who is not giving who opportunity? Is it the case that women are trying to get into the space, but they're not being allowed to get into the space? Or they are discouraged for certain reasons that we're going to be finding out right after this break. So do not go away. You're welcome back to ETV Ghana's the African Women's Voices Show. If you just joined us, well, we are about to discuss the challenges that women face uh, in the area of STEM. Why do we not have a lot more women in the space? Well, I am not into STEM. I'm sure you're going to be asking yourself, okay, you that is even presenting the show, are you a STEM woman? I'm not a STEM woman, okay? <laughs> I'm not. So I'm going to start with me. Part of the reason I couldn't be part of STEM is the fact that when I was being raised, I loved science, yes, but it got to a point in secondary school, then I just was not able to understand the whole process. Chemistry especially, you know, I didn't understand this chemical reaction things, and even the approach to teaching was not practical. So there was a lot of memorization, and so it wasn't really working for me. So that was a challenge I faced. Maybe if today, where we have better teaching techniques, where maybe I would experience science better, I may have chosen science. But because I had to memorize too many formulas, and these formulas, I was memorizing them, but I had absolutely no idea what they even meant. They tell you Na plus Cl is NaCl. Okay, how does Na look like? I don't know how Na look like. How does CL look like? I don't know. But if there were practical opportunities where I get to see where this NA is and how it looks like, and this CL, we're going to have to combine, and then the quantity I have to combine to be able to get the NACL, I would appreciate it better, but it discouraged me. So that was my own problem. What was your problem about science? I'd like you to drop it right now in our comment section on Facebook. Okay. So coming back to you, I'd like to find out from you what you think the challenges women face could be. I just, I just mentioned mine and it was enough to discourage me from getting into the space. What would you say? Um, certainly, I think that there's a lot of challenges. Um, I mean, cultural beliefs from, you know, generational cultural beliefs sometimes believe that women are supposed to be in a certain field or maybe stay home or maybe just become uh, a signatures or something, but do not see women in science or do not see women in technology and really um, affects the confidence of a lot of women. So even now that we're pushing a lot of women to go out in STEM, the confidence is quite low. So that's another problem. Um, another problem is basically having resources out there to really help women or help girls that want to get into STEM, right? Um, there are resources out there, but I feel like there's not a lot of resources that are helping girls in that area. Um, when I talk about um, resources, it could be mentorship, right? It could be, I mean, mentorship, All it's all about representation. Um, you talked about your story. I have a similar story as well because, okay. um, you know, growing up, in Canada, my parents wanted me to become a doctor or a nurse and everything like that. And I mean, I loved chemistry so much that I actually got the highest mark in in my class. Wow, I received, good. Yeah, I received. <laughs> and I left science because I just was not finding my feet in chemistry. Different strokes for different folks, you see. <laughs> <laughs> and um, however, I didn't have the mentorship. I didn't have the representation for me to look up to. 
So in, I remember in high school, we were supposed to take physics, um, biology. I took all that except for physics in grade 12. And unfortunately, when I applied to get into chemistry, when I was like about 17 years old, I didn't get in. I didn't get in, even though I had a high mark in class because I didn't take physics and because I didn't have the proper mentorship to tell me what courses I needed to take or there wasn't any proper rep representation of me to see. Like, okay, you know, this is, this is a black woman that is into science and I want to be like her. It's, it was quite hard. And even now, like, when you do see women that's out there, you do see that there's a, even when you talk about, when you talk to women in science, they, all of them talk about imposter syndrome. Even when you're in it, you still feel like you're not worth it. You mm. feel like you're not doing enough or you feel like you're a fraud in an industry that you've actually earned to be in it. And there's many spaces that you get in that you feel like, oh, I maybe I need to shut up or I may not, I shouldn't, you know, speak up too much because there's too many men here. Mm. There's too many eyes looking at me. Maybe what I'm saying is wrong. And it could be what you're saying is right, but the confidence and the representation that you don't see really limits our, you know, our ability to really shine on. And that is some of the problems that we, I feel like we have. Um, in, with women or girls going into STEM. Okay. Wow. So it has to do with what she just said. So what do you think could also be reasons women are not stepping into STEM? I am also looking at the side of engineering. It looks really masculine. Because if it's something like mechanical engineering, it's so masculine. It feels like, okay, I'm going to have to be carrying, you know, car engines you know all those heavy material mm -hmm. and i'm wondering a lot of ladies who are into that space you find out that they have got you know muscles and they look so tough so it kind of discourages other women from even trying to get into that space so electrical engineering maybe maybe soft so you find mm -hmm. more women going in there but mechanical engineering okay so do not be scared about going into that space i'm sure now we have a lot of cranes and support tools that will help to lift you know stuff it's not the time where you have women now having to lift those mm -hmm. things to look masculine when they want to look, you know, the way they look and appreciate themselves the way they do. So, uh, okay. So, will there be any other kind of challenge that you want to talk about or we'll leave that to our audience for them to send in and then we'll read out for them? Um, I think that any other ch challenge is really allowing us to shine, I think, giving us the, the resources. And I feel for me, mentorship is very important to me really looking having someone to look up to we need more women um that are in science or in in stem to step out and talk and influence some of these young girls to join them and really be approachable right um and i think that is how we're able to get more women and girls in stem us women that are already in it really stepping out and telling other girls to join us okay. um so that's i think that's the main problem having that representation out there and i mean i do a lot of mentorship with girls but i feel like there's not en there's not enough out there there needs to be more representation for other girls and women to see to see okay all right so uh, let me just go over to the facebook page and see what people have got to say and i am seeing something from a girl from osu osu is in accra and she's now she can actually said i never ever liked science because my lecturers were never friendly so if you are a science lecturer and you've made things tough you see that you've made one girl who has just spoken out not to like science and you can imagine how many other girls passed through your care who decided not to be in that space because you were an obstruction so if you're a teacher or a lecturer in that space please be more friendly and accommodating people find it tough already so let it be easier for them okay so i see you ifani from lagos nigeria ifani says um he didn't like science but um he would encourage his girls to go into science all right thank you very much you encourage your girls to go into science <laughs> we love that the fact that you're a man who didn't really like science but you want your daughters to get into science kudos to you thank you so much then we'll also go over to cape coast we see a message from araba araba says that she stepped out of science because the boys laughed at her a lot uh, at the science lab so it probably had to do with the way she put together or maybe when, how she holds the apparatus or the confusion she experiences in the lab. So the boys were laughing at her. 
So if you're here and you also laugh at people, you see you're discouraging them from getting to that space, especially girls. So let's stay away from that. Parents are watching. This show is actually for quite a number of women and parents and uncles and aunties. Let's try and speak to our younger ones at home and let them know that some of their actions are likely to get people discouraged from getting into you know areas that could have developed our societies better we would like to make a call to some of our women who are in times uh, when we're able to get through to them we would let you know okay so we'll be making a call to dr ira she is one of our very regular um, guests who has been taking us through cervical cancer and uh, other forms of uh, issues that disturb women so we'll be speaking to her and finding out what her experience has been in this space of science so while we're trying to get her i'll continue with my questioning yes e festival happened not too long ago and i saw you moderating a session yes and the session had to do with climate change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now i i would really appreciate to know what these women or these women panelists you know what their findings were about climate change and what solutions they try to prefer i mean to be an in to an african society mm -hmm. well thank you for that question actually climate change is a, a passion of mine and um i mean when you talk about science climate change is all about science everything that we're doing currently right now has a chemical reaction that has a result which is climate change hence sometimes we're getting these um really you know in, in terms of weather i mean lately Right now in Turkey, there's an earthquake, you know, there are storms in places. It's all because of climate change, the things that we're doing currently right now that's contributing to that. So um, during the um, the E Festival, one of the things that we talked about was attitudes, right? Um, mm -hmm. Attitudes that's contributing to that negative attitudes. And that comes down to values and culture that I talked about before, mm -hmm. right? Um, we think that it's okay for us to be able to, you know, just leave plastic bags on the floor, I mean on the ground, burn plastics, all that sort of things that actually contribute to climate change. And if we're able to change those attitudes, we'd be able to see a change in that. Also, um, when we talked about, they, we've talked about certain programs that um, the government is trying to put in place um, um, in terms of um, recycling, um, segregation, if you know what I'm talking about, segregation mm -hmm. is really segregating your compost um, and of course with your with your regular garbage and making sure that everything is in is in place to, to actually contribute to the betterment of the environment. So I mean bottom line is attitude. Bottom line is attitude and really understanding that we need to change the way we think about climate, we need to change the way we think about environment and understand that everything that we do is interconnected and eventually will affect us later. Mm. True, we were all sad when we heard that Achu was, uh, you know, missing. But uh, th thankfully, we hear that he has been found and he's taking treatment in the hospital. Our heart goes out to all those who have faced one form of casualty or the other, and those that are still looking for, that's been looking looked for, and those who are still within the rubbles, those who have passed away. Our heart goes out to you. In fact, globally everyone is you know empathizing with you and we're hoping that you get out of this stronger okay but as for what she's saying part of what went on is the fact that people are not paying close attention to climate change and it's a conversation we need to keep you know talking about we need to keep at it but whenever you mention climate change Africans always feel that, oh, this is foreign to us. We don't have any climate change issues. This is very foreign. It's for the Western world. Um, it doesn't really affect us. It is coming. And over time, it will get to a point we will not really be able to know what to do. That's why she's talking about segregating our compost. But the challenge here is, I remember that quite recently, the government tried to put bins across streets and homes and people will leave their homes and come and pick these bins and we don't know what they do with them yeah so are you part of such people okay i hear that we have dr irajwa online hello dr irajwa hi Ines. oh i am so happy we we're able to get through you are very difficult to connect with because you always have one thing or the other doing. And that's something we get to know about women in science. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks All for right. having me as well. Oh, so sweet. So I just wanted to find out from you briefly, 
what do you think is a benefit that stands out for you for choosing to be in science? Uh, please come again. What would you say is one benefit that stands out for you for choosing mm -hmm. to be in science, to be a woman in science? One benefit, um, I'd say it gave me a lot of confidence. It helped me improve my problem solving skills. Um, it makes you want to do more. It pushes you. Ah, oh, that's yes. why you've been winning all the awards. You see, all yes, the awards so. you've been talking, and you keep doing more and more and more. <laughs> okay, don't amen take to that. Oh, amen to that, because I know much more of it is coming. There's even this one you put up recently, a nomination you got recently. Yes, definitely. Yes, yes, yes. And we are hoping you grab that as well. Yeah, I hope so too. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, so uh, just before you leave us, I'd like you to say something to a girl watching us right now who is scared to step into STEM. Sorry, please come again. If you can just leave a word of advice to a girl watching the show right now who is afraid to be a woman in STEM. Okay, so um, my advice to any young girl or woman watching the show um, is to go for it. I'd encourage every young girl out there and not to be afraid of, of venturing into engineering or into medicine or any area that they feel or think it's male dominated. Because as the adage goes, so, um, what men can do, men can do it even better. So um, let's encourage our young women out there to go for their dreams and their goals and just work hard towards it. Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, ladies welcome. and gentlemen, that was Dr. Iradria from Douala Medical Center. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again. Have a nice day. You too, dear. Okay. So getting back to the conversation, you know, I was talking about how people would come and then they'll move the bin that the government has provided. And government had to even get to the extent of having to cage bins. And even with that, people found ways to cut through the cages and pick the bins. So now with this kind of attitude, how do you think we're going to be able to live in a better sanitary environment? You see, it's not going to work. And they're going to make it much more difficult for women in science because they are into climate change. They are advocating, asking people to, you know, put up better practices. And the cycle is just going round and round. We're not having to get the solutions that we're looking for. So let's all become advocates for STEM, okay? I'll go for a quick commercial break. When we return, I'll get to see if I could make one more call. To stay tuned. <laughs> You're welcome back to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. Before we went on the break, we heard from Dr. Irajwa, who is the Chief Medical Director of Douala Medical Center. She shared her experience about being into science and how science has helped her to want to do more and how science has helped her to actually be a better person, to be more confident and you know, look forward to the future with so much joy and zest. She also advised girls who want to step into the space to go for it, even when people are laughing at them and telling them that it's male dominated, so they should go for a place that we have more women. Just step into it and make that difference that you were born to make. So I'm coming back to Ya. Ya, you are into the production of Soko Bags. And I mentioned to our audience earlier when we started, I'm very sure that there is a connection, you know, to science because you love this science so much. So I'd like to know what the connection is, one, after which we're going to have to look at maybe some women who are actually making a change around the world using science. So let's start with Soka Bags first. Sure. Um, so with Soka Bags, I mean, what made us start the business was because of changes that we're seeing in the climate, like in terms of um, the flooding that's been happening in Accra, what was the, the catalyst of 
of us starting the business was when that flood happened, I believe in 2016, when over, I think, 100 people passed away. Um, so that really ignited us to really start something like Soko Bags. So Soko Bags essentially is a reusable, um, we, we manufacture um, eco-friendly bags from cotton and jutes. So cotton is a biodegradable product. So something that actually decomposes, it's all science, right? When it decomposes, it's actually better for the environment. Also, um, you know, the process of actually turning the cotton into the yarn. We also utilize um, jute yarn. Jute yarns are actually from vegetables, right? So okay. these are some of the items that we, I mean, sustainable materials that we actually use, and it's all in science. When we come to even circle bags, the way we do our, we run our business in general, we utilize a lot of technology. And um, even in terms of our invoicing, right? Every single invoice that goes out is actually um, e-invoice, -E so we don't issue any paper invoices. Um, even the way we um, take orders, everything is done on a digital platform. So it really makes us utilize the, the, the technology that we have at hand because there's so much that we can do um, with the technology we have at hand and make, making sure that it actually is better for the environment. You know, um, so circle bags is not even a, aside from the manufacturing and the science behind it. We also have that technology aspect of it. Um, we also utilizing a way to turning our materials, our um, I would say waste materials into recyclable um, menstrual pads for women. Okay. And these are also, uh, of course, the science behind it, making sure that this is actually reusable. So these are some of the things that you know we are doing with circle bags and. Um, Aside from making sure that our environment is clean, you know, we also understand that climate change also affects women, right? And then we're also making sure that these women are okay. Um, we, we, I would say 80% of our employees are women as well. So um, there's so many, I would say interconnection with STEM inside mm -hmm. our business. I can and see. Then, <laughs> and you know, you mentioned and, something about providing solutions. And I like the fact that it's supposed to be providing solutions against the flooding situation mm -hmm. in our country. And the fact that there's somehow a connection to, you know, the sanitary pads that we mm -hmm. use. Because a lot of ladies are unable to use um, or to purchase sanitary pads because they feel that there's tax on it. It's getting more expensive by the day and everything. And now what you do is able to have us have a reusable mm -hmm. kind of sanitary pad. Yes, yes. So this is an initiative that we actually, it's currently in process right now. We're looking to um, launch in the next few months. Mm -hmm. And that would, of course, ensure that this is, of course, going to be a free a free initiative that we're doing for women and girls in rural areas and, of course, in some places in Accra. But um, really um, ensuring that we're zero waste. At the end of the day, zero waste. Zero waste. Zero waste. And, and we, we, we would ensure. like to be part of this campaign that you're having. And, you know, when you're talking to people, let us know what's mm -hmm. going on so we could amplify your voice as well. Certainly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So um, time is far spent and uh, I can't let her go without asking her to tell us as a woman who is into science, what more we can do to encourage girls to step into the space. Okay. What can we do to encourage them? Well, one way African Women's Voices Show is using to encourage women is to be able to even have this conversation for people to appreciate the fact that we have women in STEM and we want to grow them. We want to amplify their voices. She mentioned about something they are going to be um, launching very soon and we want to be part of that. So if you have an initiative that's going to benefit women and it's a science innovation, please do let us know. Call ETV Studios or send us a message on our WhatsApp platform or on our Facebook page or across the social media platforms. We would like to hear about it. So just before you leave, tell us what do we need to do more to encourage girls into this space? Um, what we need to do more, as I mentioned before, is representation and really allowing our voices to be heard and allowing us to shine in spaces. Basically calling us to the table as well. Right, allowing us to um, show what we're capable of, um, and having that representation at the table helps us, helps us to see that hey, I saw this woman do it, I can do it as well. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be more women that are in STEM, um, you know, help other girls gain that confidence within that space, um, because yes, it's it's very male dominated, and when you do getting, you will feel like you're an imposter, and that is the whole imposter syndrome. And when you have that confidence going into that room, 
that are you know full of men you will step out with your best foot forward because that confidence literally comes out of you so having those you know representation that's actually allowing us or i would say more as pouring into us you know pouring into us or pouring into the girls to be better will be i think will be the way, best way forward and i always say if you're not gonna invite them to the table give them the tools to build their own mm. great so we'll go for a quick commercial break when we return we get to find out if there are african women doing well in stem who have maybe put something out there that we are all experiencing and uh, you know um, using and enjoying. We've heard quite a lot about other women. Let's take a look at what the innovations are around women from African descent. Please stay tuned. And you are welcome back to ETV Ghana's African Women's Voices show. This is the last part of the show tonight. If you haven't been able to join us from the beginning, don't worry. It's been streamed on Facebook. So after we're done, you just go on our Facebook page and watch it again. It will also be uploaded on our YouTube page. And then you get the access as you need. Right, before we went on the break, I mentioned that we're going to have to take a look at what African women have been able to invent. What have they really, you know, brought into this world to provide us with solutions? I tried to actually look for what African women have done and, and uh, I didn't really find much. I found other women doing stuff which is quite encouraging and we are happy about it. But let's talk about home. What can we do? for people to really get to see what it is we're doing. You see, she mentioned that they are putting together something that is going to bring about, you know, ladies having to have the reusable sanitary parts. It may have been done elsewhere. Yes, it may not be a new thing, but the issue is how many black women are stepping into that space and how many of them are we even hearing about? So. If not that she mentioned it on this platform, I wouldn't have known that a black woman is thinking of something like that. And that's why I want to amplify her voice. So could it be that black women are doing quite a lot, but the thing is the reportage. The thing is about whether their voices have been amplified or not. Whatever be the case, I'd like to hear you say it in the comment section. So this will be your time to speak. What do you think? Um, yes, I think we need more, like, you know, media representation um, so our voices are being heard. And I think um, during the break, what I said I, when I had the conversation was, was that African women, most of us are not very confident. So meaning that even when we do invent something, we're scared to bring it out or tell someone that we've done it because we're scared of what people or someone will think or say. Um, so that confidence is not there. So we're scared to, you know, invent something or um, get our voices heard. So I would say I would really encourage African women in general just to be, you know, get their voices heard, speak out. Um, if you need to reach out to anybody to help you put your product out there, go ahead and do that. Because they say that um, when, there's a, when there's a job posting, and the job posting simply um, the requirement a woman um, and a woman looks at the requirement most times a man would apply for the job if they are maybe 50 percent less qualified a woman will not apply if they're 70 percent qualified so that of the course the exactly really be perfect exactly so that confidence and uh, that confidence is what we need to step out and I think that is what we're going to, once we have that confidence, we'll be able to see more changes. And that confidence, of course, comes from the, the, the role models, right? Mm -hmm. The people that are already in the space need to pour into the, the girls and the women to come out confidently to do what they need to do. Yeah, I think I agree with that because I know that there are women who are into the hair pieces that we're using, you know, and we have women who are into hair products. You know, they all have something to do with science anyway. There are so many things that are happening that women are contributing to, but we are not really getting our voices heard. 
and we want to use this platform to get the voices of women who are bringing about change, who are bringing about development in our society. Let's let the world hear that women are doing this and they are African women, they are Ghanaians, they are Nigerians, they are Ivorians, they are Senegalese, they are Moroccans, they are Africans. Let's get the word out there. Sometimes we find ourselves pushing the product but people know the product and they don't know that a woman is behind the product. So as you're pushing the product, please push the fact that a woman is behind it as well. Okay? All right. So uh, I want to say a very big thank you to those of you who joined us via Facebook. I appreciate your presence and I cannot mention you all right now. But as I always do, I always want to say, yeah, please join us again when we come up next week. Would you want to have any final words before we draw the curtain? Um, no, actually, just thank you for having me. And it was a pleasure you know, speaking to you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> thank you very much. And on that note, I'd like to say do enjoy the rest of our interesting lineup for you. Bye-bye.